Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Rejan al Haq and this is my introduction. Today I'm going to teach you about basic, uh, how to create basic networking in Cisco Packet Tracer using switch router and the configuration of these intermediate devices and end device. So without further ado, let's dive into the presentation. So I'm going to teach you uh, what is LAN, some basic idea about the network idea in a subnet mask making a simple network using switch shutter and devices and of course configuring the switch and static routing basically you don't need to configure the switch because switch is a layer 2 device uh, it's, a it's in the data link layer that means it works with the ma mac address but there are some things you can configure in switch and static routing that means we are going to set the routing path for the router that how it will going to route the packets in the network and at last establishing a communication between the end devices so the first topic what is LAN here you can see a logical form of the network uh, remember there are two forms physical and logical so this is a logical form in a pa Cisco packet tracer so you can see there are three routers three switches and some end devices the desktop okay now when you open up a logical form of a network you can see uh, the portion of a network which is connected to a switch oh sorry which is connected to the router so including the router the switch the desktops all this part is a LAN. Now, what is uh, LAN means the local area network. Now, to simplify this, uh, let's think about an analogy. Um, okay, so think about that the, the router you have in the home in your house actually, that's not the router, that's the access point. Okay, but for this lesson, let's just think that this is a router. Okay, so there's a router in your home through which you get the internet. So with this router, you have connected your laptop, your mobile phones, your printer, desktop, and etc. So think about this: the router you have this router, and it is the all the devices in your home is connected to that router. So your home is basically a LAN, a simple local area network. But don't get me wrong; I'm just giving you the analogy. The LAN is much more bigger than this. So think of that that that's a local area network a LAN and after the router that means the access point the things uh, the net the internet you are getting from the ISP the internet service provider th that is the one I'm just giving you the analogy okay that's not the right idea but for your understanding I'm just dividing it some simple parts and I'm going I'm just giving the simple ideas okay so in a logical network when you are, when you see a router that means that including the router the things that is passed behind that router all are is a LAN it's a local area network you can communicate with the devices in the network very easily you don't need to go out from a network you don't need to use the default gateway now what is the default gateway we'll get into that later so now I think you get the idea about the local area of the LAN. Okay, so you can see there are three LAN, LAN one, LAN two, LAN three. There are three routers. So basically, this whole thing is LAN. This whole thing is LAN. This whole thing is LAN. Okay. So I have given you the idea about the LAN. Now let's go into the packet tracer, and we're going to establish two LANs, and we're going to configure the, them. Okay. So first, let's let's take two end devices. Um, that's PC one. That's PC two or PC zero. Okay, so okay. PC two. We're going to take a switch. Okay, okay. This is a switch. This is a two ninety fifty uh, twenty four. Okay, that means it has twenty four ports. Okay another switch 
we are going to take um, okay router okay we are going to take 4321 model router router another one and another one so there are basically two lens and these two lens are connected with this router okay so we are going to connect these devices with the wire let's get into the connections and first we'll take straight copper cop <coughs> sorry copper straight cable that means okay and we're going to connect the fast internet port from the pc0 to the switch the fast internet 01 and again a copper cable first uh, two port to the router that gigabit ethernet port okay now there's a thing for connect to connect the router to router you have to use sorry copper crossover you have to use the crossover cable okay it's the it is just mandatory so just remember that gigabit ethernet port now zero so what are you going to use for these two we are going to use the same cable one and zero and for these two we are just going to use the straight cable okay it's a zero it's the one one and again this is zero first time at zero and two <coughs> Now remember that if you ever run out of the port, that means the interfaces, we call interfaces in the router. You can see there's a two port gigabit internet 00 and 001. But if you ever um, run out of the port, then you can just add these uh, extra ports to the router. But when you are going to add it, just remember that you have to just switch off the router, okay? Just switch off the router, then just drag, click it drag it on this part and it will add some more serial ports so just this is a simple network so we don't need that much port so now this is a simple network you can see there are two lens this part is one lens and this is one lens now I have told you earlier that a switch doesn't need a configuration for first thing the best we don't need the, uh, the configuration we need to configure you can see this is a green light uh, that means it is ready to connect with the switch but there are things you can configure in the switch and these are not that much but it is it will help when you are uh, in a big network it will help to uh, you to find out the swi which switch you want to come uh, you want to configure and what is, is the IP address of the VLAN the v uh, virtual terminal v 2 y and what is the password of this uh, interfaces in this port so yeah now I'm going to uh, first before I go into the uh, what is here before I go into the configuration part uh, I'm going to give IP addresses uh, of these things of these in devices it will help me to configure the uh, configure this network much easy much easily okay so let's give this part 192 168 and i hope you guys know what is ip address uh, ip address ip address is an address about a device that helps us to distinguish a device in the network it now is internet is a vast network which is connected to one devices to one devices it's a vast network so how are you going to how are you going to distinguish a end device or a device in the network it's simple you have to use the IP address so we are going to use IP address so for PC0 I'm going to assign IP address 192.168.0.101 okay don't about it I'm going to discuss this about uh, this in the network ID and the subject mask part so just don't worry about it and for the switch uh, I have told you earlier that uh, switch doesn't need any IP address because it works with the MAC address but we need to assign a VLAN uh, through which uh, we can remotely access the switch and 
we can configure it so for this uh, actually uh, let's go it there okay um 192.168.0.1 <coughs> okay okay so this ip is the ip address of our this interface gigabit 0.0, .0 which uh, uh, this routers this interface is connected to this switch via via uh, fast internet zero port so we are assigning the ip address to the router and uh, routers this port and this ip address will be will be the default gateway for this network now what is default gateway uh, sup uh, suppose you are in the home now okay you are in the home okay right now because this is pandemic we are in the lockdown situation so you're in the home so when you are uh, how are you going to get out from your home you have to use a gate okay with uh, you have to open the gate and you will have to get out from the home via the gate through the gate so this default gateway means if you want to send a packet or any information to this LAN this is the LAN 1 this is LAN 2 so if you want to send packets from this PC to this PC you'll have to get out from this LAN from this network then you'll have to enter this network so how will how it will get through it it will use this default gateway this door to get out from this network so we have assigned the default gateway and always remember that uh, the IP you have assigned in this port which is kind of the switch it will always be the default gateway and okay for VLAN IP let's consider 192.168.0.2 okay now okay we have assigned IP for this interface and we have to assign IP for this interface too and we are going to 172.116.1.1 again I have told you don't worry about it I will explain it later <coughs> okay okay let me just make it a little more big so it will help you to understand what is going on here mm -hmm. okay 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 this port and this port okay now remember that between two router you will always have to assign the same network you will all have you will always have to assign the IP of the same network so in this port the gigabit 001 port I have assigned 172 dot one sixteen dot one dot one IP now of a network ID okay then it is connected to this port with uh, gigabit I think zero 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 so we'll have to assign the same uh, same network ID uh, IP address so we are going to do one seventy two dot sixteen dot one dot two okay so it is it is okay it will be this okay that means between this uh, always uh, remember that between two routers the IP address of the interfaces will be in the same network otherwise it will it won't communicate okay so now we are going to assign for these two ports the this router 000 and this router 001 so we have to assign the IP in the same network so let's take another note and we're going to class AIP okay don't worry I'm going to discuss it about later 10 10 10 10 10 dot 2 and for this port I'm going 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 1 okay 
Okay. Now we'll have to assign the IP. Okay. For this port, I think I'm going to assign um, 192.168.10.1. And for the VLAN IP 192.168.10.2 and for the end device 192.168.10.3. Okay, so our IPS sign are finished, and okay, everything is finished. You can see. So now, mm, okay, the IP I have assigned, uh, I will discuss it when I am going to the routing part, that means in the static routing. But first, now I am going to configure the basic switch. So let's dive into the switch. So in switch, you can see there are uh, some com uh, columns, uh, the fields you can see, physical, configuration, CLI and attributes. So this is a simulation software. You will get both configuration part and the CLI part. But when you're working working in the real life scenario, you will just work have to work with the CLI part. So I'm going to teach you in the CLI part. So okay, okay. Let's uh, before that let's go to the presentation. Um, sorry. Okay. In switch, there are three execution mode. First one is user execution mode. Second one is privileged. Then the third one is global. Now each one has the higher option of execution than the previous one. Okay. So the first thing you are going to enter, in, you are going to encounter in a switch, is the user execution mode. If you go to the switch, um, here's the one. Uh, you can see the arrow this arrow means you are in the user execution mode now uh, if you uh, give a question mark you can see these are the command available for the user execution mode you see now from user execution mode to go to the the higher execution that means the privileged exit mode you have to type enable and you can see the symbol has changed to hash that means you are in user uh, privileged exit execution mode. So now if you type the question mark, you can see there are much more commands than the user execution mode. You see? More, more, much more. And you can go back to the previous uh, execution mode by commanding end. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, one minute. Uh, you exit okay you see you have gone you, you have to type exit and you can go back to the previous mode and you can use shortcut uh, like a, you don't have to use enable you can just type n and so we were on the enable part that means how we can go to user execution mode from um, from user execution mode to privileged execution mode and now I'm going to teach you how to grow from privileged execution mode to global execution mode and global, global in global execution mode you will get much more commands than the privileged execution mode like I have said earlier okay so how can go how can you go to that part you just have to type configure terminal you can see the symbol is the same but there is a word in the bracket and the config that means you are in the global execution mode and if you type uh, the question mark you can see there is much more and there is more you can you just have to press space and much more so how can you go back to the previous one you just have to type in okay now you have gone to the previous execution mode. now remember that if any time in your configuration you just have typed something 
out of the context out of the syntax and you have entered to see if you can see that there is something the server is, uh, the translation is domain server that that means the switch is translating what the switch is trying to figure out what is this and you cannot go back and you cannot go down and how can you exit from the situation you just have to press control shift and six control shift and six and you can go back to the prompt so now i have teach you about the user execution mode the previous execution mode and the global execution mode. now we are going to assign a name for the switch now why are you going to assign it assign it because just as i have uh, just have i told you earlier that if you're in a big network how can you find the switch you can find a switch from its name and remember that always give a logical name to the switch now to give a name for the switch you have to go to the global configuration mode and for this you don't have to type the whole command the configure terminal just type conf conf der term. this is the beauty of the cisco packet tracer you can just use a short form and it will uh, take you to that prompt so from here you have to type host name sorry host name now just say it's in the level one that means this switch is established in the level one so sw1 you can see the name has changed so now let's guess let's get back to the previous mode okay now we're going to assign a um, okay before password let's assign a banner now what is a banner now a banner is a thing that uh, when someone is firing up the switch uh, firing up this switch this level one switch sw1 what message it will show him or uh, that person when he's firing this switch there is a message that will show before he's entering the switch so how can you go that we have to go to the global configuration computer and we have to go to the uh, banner mode now where can I, uh, where it's go p a r n e r banner okay okay uh, if you are stuck in a command and you don't know what to type just type uh, a portion of that command and just space and type the question mark and it will tell you it will show you that how can what is the next part of that command so i have a typed banner and i have entered question mark and it is telling me that motd that means set message of the day banner the banner i'm going to say so motd and i'm going to start writing the message the first message that the user is going to see so remember that you have to start the message with a particular symbol and you have to finish that message with that symbol and you can't use that symbol between the messages you just have to remember that the what you are starting with and you, are you have to finish that uh, with that thing okay so i'm starting with a star and i'm going to finish it with star and i um, always remember and always one thing that you have to remember that try to give a good message uh, that when a hacker is going to uh, trying to hack this so just scared for to just to scare them off just try that yeah this is authorized uh, switch authorized so um, that means that they will try to hack it or they will try to access it uh, illegal so let's give it a message this is a authorized switch authorized okay authorized um access authorized access switch switch oh, sorry sorry don't break in okay i'm not going to show you now because uh, there's one thing we have to save all this configuration the things we have changed into one thing 
but before that I am going to configure one, uh, some other things too and I am going to tell you why we have to save these things so now we are going to set passwords now what password uh, why need we need password so for password I am telling you that uh, we have seen the uh, three configuration mode uh, at, and we can set password for two of them the user execution mode and the privileged execution mode now why you need password of obviously you don't want anyone unauthorized person to access this switch and mess with the commands mess with the configuration so to set the password for the first one the user execution mode we have to always go to the global execution mode and from there type line console 0 that means the first line is going to appear the user configuration mode and set up you can see their um, password you can see set a password so password let's um, SWITCH switch 1 and we have to enable this password that means when the switch is firing up that means this password password or uh, this pass will be enabled so we have to type login that means this password is enabled and 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 now we are going to set password for the previous execution now how are we going to do it we have to enable and type you can see there are two things password and secret now what is the difference you can see the it says for itself password assign the privileged level password and secret assign the privileged level secret now if you type just enable password and then the password you want it won't be hashed or it won't be encrypted okay but if you type the secret and then the password s w i t c h okay s w i t c h switch one okay uh, let me see what we have uh, okay line console zero okay we have seen yeah, okay we are going to use the same password so enable secret password one it will be encrypted and i am going to show you okay and how we're going to show the show run that means it will if in this command it will show you everything that is running on the current ram you can see that enable secret password it is encrypted and if you can go more you can see the for the user execution mode the line console password is switch one now we are going to set password now uh, for one more thing uh, for the VTI password and now what is VTI password and why we need now the virtual terminal password it will uh, I have told you earlier that you can access this switch remotely when you are going to access this switch remotely you need to have the IP address of the VLAN IP so that you can uh, access this switch remotely now this VLAN IP with this VLAN IP um, you are going to access this switch through the VTI port now there are 16 VTI port I am going to show you uh, let me just wait Confter and line VTI okay you can see there are 0 to 15 that means 16 VTI port this uh, that means you can remotely access to this switch through any of these 16 ports so I don't want that in my switch someone can just jump in and configure everything I have configured and messed up everything so I'm going to set password for the 16 VTI ports and so I'm going to select 0 to 15 that means all the ports and I'm going to select pass or you can say password no I'm just using the short form pass SWITCH switch one all the same oh and yes you have to use the login command so that when you are firing up yes it will just enable the password now we have done it now uh, okay now we have to save all the configuration that we have done now why do we oh okay okay before that uh, we need to set the IP address for the VLAN now 
let's do it computer and interface uh, vlan okay uh, there's one more thing you need to understand the, what is the work of this vlan there's another thing that vlan w w helps us it helps us to limit the access between the network and devices it helps to uh, in the let's say in a network there are multiple end devices and you don't uh, want them to communicate between them you don't want to uh, you don't want to what can i say their privacy you don't want them to violate the privacy of the each other so you can use you can use the vlan but uh, we are not going to dive into that just is just for the another another lesson let's just uh, assign ip okay interface or the ip we have here the it, i'm going to assign this ip again so interface vlan one yeah you can see that this many vlan you can configure in switch okay now ip address okay ip 192.168.0.2 and we have to give it a subnet max and the subnet max 255.255.255.0 now why is it this subnet mask and why is it this ip i'm going to describe it all in the routing part so don't worry about it so i have given it and we have to type the no shutdown command that means this port is active you have to activate that port via this command no shutdown now this is changed exit okay exit and if you show inter uh, sorry show ip internet sorry 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 internet brif so i print what the hell oh sorry show ip interface it will be show ip interface brif you can see that i have told you uh, there are 24 ports so these are the 24 ports and this one vlan and yes this is up the status is up and now so we have configured so many things and now we are going to save all this now why do you need to save there are two ram in a switch one is a regular ram the random access memory which is currently we are in and we have configured all these things in the ram are and there is another ram that is nvram which is a fixed memory that means uh, when you fire up or the reboot the switch the nvram in the nvram the things that are saved it will it won't change now these things are saved in the ram so if you fire up or reboot the uh, switch again uh, the all the configuration will be gone so i don't want that my works are gone i have worked so many so hard for this so how can we do that i remember that i have uh, come i have uh, typed that command show run that means show running configuration the ram the currently the things that are running on the ram so these are the thing that is running on the ram oh, okay there is one thing i didn't do um let me just do that one thing okay i have i just forget totally forgot um this is very important so <laughs> i think <laughs> sorry for my mistake um you see these passwords these are not encrypted like this one the previous exit mode password is hashed they encrypted now we have to encrypt this password that that's uh, so that nobody can easily find it now how can we do that now we can do that very simple command we have to go to the Comptable global termination mode, and we have to go to service password and encryption. Now, if you go show run, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I uh, see when you are uh, getting error, you have to remember that in which mode you are in. Just uh, remember that, don't forget. So we are in the global card mode, the, uh, in that mode this command is not available. So I have to go to the privileged mode and show run. And you can see this, you see, the password is encrypted, the password is hashed. Uh, here you can see the password, switch on, switch on, switch on. But after the encryption, these all are hashed. And now, 
let's get back to the co uh, saving parts uh, so now we are going to save that all these things from RAM to the uh, NVRAM now how are we going to do that we are going to copy the running configuration to the start configuration starting up now is the destination file name yes okay building configuration that means it's saved and how are we going to know that is it saved or not go to the directory part okay sorry directory you can see there are two things flash and nvram flash the ram and the nvram that we have just saved in now nvram if we go to the nvram sorry yes you can see there is one thing that is saved in the nvram now if we reboot okay if we re okay again and uh, what the um exit okay you can see if we exit the passes uh, we have said the message is showing the masses this is authorized access switch uh, don't break in now user access verification now what was the password the password for the user execution mode it was SWITC switch one you can see now you have control of the switch we have gone to the uh, user execution mode now to go to the privilege execution mode you type enable and it is okay enable and it is asking for our password so what was SWITC switch one see so this is the basic configuration of a switch and you can also <coughs> sorry you can also uh, configure the time the date you can also set these things but I'm not going to show you these things uh, I have shown you the basic configuration of these switches so I hope this is enough for you and if you want to know more you can always google it now let's get into the routing part so far we have learned how to configure basic switch with some basic commands so now let's get into the routing part so before going into that um, let me just show you and give you the basic idea about subnet mask and network ID now remember that in this lesson we have used IPv4 that means IP version 4 and it has in IP version 4 there are I in IP address there are four parts and each part holds eight bits that means combining four parts it will be 32 bits IP address that means this four parts is uh, every part is an octet that means four octets now in IPv4 there are five IP classes class A class B class C and class D and E but we are going to we aren't going to discuss that they are not that much important we are going to stick with these three so what is subnet mask and network ID now in network ID there is one more term that is the host ID now network ID is a part of a IP address that will this that will distinguish a network that means that uh, that uh, let me go to the system you can see there are in this LAN the IP addresses start with 192.168.0 192.168.0 192.168.0 that means in LAN the network ID will be 192.168.0 that means first three octet the 24 bits okay that means a network ID helps to identify a network and the remaining parts will be leave out for the host ID that means this last parts are the host network host ID host individual uh, you can say identification identify uh, the identifying things you can say so this is the network ID and what is subnet mask basically a subnet mask helps us to find out which portion is the network ID and which portion is the host ID now in class A IP uh, the, the first portion will be used in class A that means out of the 32 bits that means in 4 octets the first octets will be in use and first octets du uh, the duration the first octets range is 
from 1 to 126 and 127 is uh, out for another IP and it is not in the use so we, ju we just leave it out so the first of the uh, four classes will be in use and the range is one from 1 to 6 you can see from the slash 8 that means the class a IP address and the fixed part of the subnet max that means for any of this class a IP address this first part will be fixed that means the first parts number will be 255 and why is it 255 255 is from 0 to 255 is a number of IP you can assign in a network okay so for each of these uh, network uh, from each of these IP address from class A the fixed part will be this and these three part will be changed uh, depending on the last three parts that means for 1 to uh, 1.2.3.2 first part 255 will be same but the last three part will be uh, changed will be depending on these three and the subnet mass uh, this is the initial day. and always remember that that in this network and in this network and in this network what will be the initial ID what will be the initial IP address the initial IP address is 1.1.0.0.0 for this 10.0.0.0 for this 95.0.0.0 and 126.0.0.0 because obviously uh, the IP address starts from 0 that means for the initial IP the subnet mask will be this this 255.0.0 and if we have understood this then the rest of the same for class B the range is 128 to 191 that means uh, slash 16 that means first two octets will be in use 8 8 that means 16 and rest of the part will be for the host ID and this is the network ID and like this one the subnet marks for the first two will be the fixed and this will change vary on these two and the initial that means 192.2.0.0.168.3.0.0 the initial IPs uh, subnet mask will be this to try to tell zero and like class C, uh, this class A and class like class B, uh, the class C is also the same. The first three octet will be in used uh, for this uh, network ID for this IP class C slash 24. That means first three, 888 out of 32, the 24 bits will be for the network ID. And yes, the fixed subnet mask will be this. That means. 192.2.3 for this three the subnet mask will be this free fixed and this will change and uh, yes the initial subnet mask uh, I, uh, for the IP the initial IP this will be this 255.0.0 that means 192.2.3.0 for that initial IP now that network's initial IP the uh, subnet mask will be 255.0.0 now if you have understood this the network address I, I have to say that that subnet mask uh, sub subnetting and supernetting there is also these terms they are much more complicated and this is not the lesson for that so just remember the basic things I have said to you and let's go into the routing part so now you can see that this PCN switch is ready to communicate also this PC and this switch now we have to configure these lines these networks and we have to assign these IPs to these interfaces the ports we call inter uh, we call ports the interfaces so we have to assign this IP to these ports so let's assign it uh, this for this router 0 okay mm. Uh, for this route, okay, let me just go to the enable uh, user accession mode. Exit, 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 exit. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Like the switch, the router has three execution mode user, privileged, and the global configuration mode. And we have to configure the interfaces. We have to assign the IP for these interfaces in the global configuration. So let's go to the uh, first. We have to go to the privileged enable, then configure, and we are here. Now, this is the interface here. Now we have to get into this interface. Now, how can we get into it? Interface 
fs interface gig and we can just click on the tab and it will give us the rest of the command for uh, for the, for us and i think it's much more easier because <laughs> i don't know because uh, i can't remember the whole command so it's it's much it's very much useful okay so we have to uh, go to the zero uh, slash zero slash zero voila now we are on this port now we are going to assign this ip to this port now how can you do that uh, ip add ip add 192.168.0.1 now as you can see it starts with 192.168.0.1 that means this IP address is from class C that means what will be the subnet mask the subnet mask will be 2 and why is that because this is a class C IP address and 24 that means uh, the subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 and yes we have to turn on the interface the port and how we can do that no shut down voila it's on you can see it's a uh, green now we have to turn on this port and let's go to that port uh, conf tar and oh let me see if this ip is assigned or not okay yes this ip is assigned you can see <coughs> I'm not going to configure the uh, in the configuration mode. I'm going to use the CLI mode because in the real life you have to uh, you'll have to use the you'll have to use the CLI mode. Okay, so okay, let's okay and C O N F T A R and now let's go to the mm, interface gigabit. Okay, gig interface gig over okay so gig gig g i g gig okay now is zero slash zero slash one now the ip had it will be 172.16.6.3 now oh yes it has turned on green that means it is ready the ports are on so what will be the subnet subnet mask the common subnet mask so you can uh, you can see the 172 that means this is a class b ip address you can see 128 to 191 that means 170 to the fixed part will be this two that means 255 so we are going to give 255.255.0.0 and yes we have to no shut down yes and it's active i think so let me check yes it is active okay now let's go to this router and for this router i'm going to use the cli mode so <laughs> don't worry okay i've just 172. Dot okay 16.7.5 and this will be this okay turn on and yes for this uh, part for this interface the ip is assigned and it is turned on i'm going to use for from now on for this two router i'm going to use the configuration mode i'm not going to use cli mode uh, you can download the cisco packet tracer and you have to practice for yourself and for gigabit 801 I am going to use uh, this IP uh, which is 10.2.3.6 and the IP is 255 now why is this two, uh, only one octet because it starts with 10 that means it's a class A IP and I am going to turn it on and hopefully it's on let's see okay okay and let's go to this router and turn on config mm, gigabit 0 which is 10.6.5.4 the 25 make it turn on 
it's turned on you can see that these two routers are ready for communication they are green lighting okay now for this port I'm going to assign 192.168.10.1 and the IP address is yes you guessed right the subnet mask will be the class C to try to try dot zero and yes make it turn on and they're ready to communicate so our only half work is done we have assigned the IP addresses for the ports and yes now we have to tell this router how to communicate how to pass the packets through this network that means uh, I have told you from earlier that in a LAN in the local network area network uh, you don't have to use the default gateway unless you want to send information out of the network if if uh, okay how can you say, uh, be sure it, if it is out of the network you can see that uh, in this network the first three octets are the same 192.160.0 but if this computer if this network's computer wants to send packets in this networks which is which network id is 192.160.0. no sorry 192.168.10.3 that uh, you can see in this network the first three octets are different uh, actually the first two are same but the third one is different is 10 and is 0 so when you are uh, sending message uh, in the message uh, in the message section in the networking uh, there will be a, a part in the message uh, which is as, which is uh, which there will be an IP address where the message will be going but uh, I'm not going to discuss this here uh, uh, very much because so, that's for the another lesson so just remember that when you are sending a packet uh, any information any uh, data uh, there will be a part a a there will be a part added to that message that what will be the destination IP so when you are sending the message if the data says that if the computer sees that uh, there is uh, 168 to uh, 192.168.10.3 the data is going to send in this PC then it will have to use the default gateway you will have to get out from the network like I have told you that in the analogy that you will have to get out get out from the uh, if you want to get out from the your home you have to use the door so it will use this default gateway to get to this network now we have to tell this router we have to show this router how it can send that packet how how it can route that packets to this PC now how are you going to do that now I'll use CLI for the first one and for the rest of the for the rest of the routers I'm going to use this config so how are you going to do that let's go to the uh, Comfter now in the global execution mode. So before we are uh, actually route it, I have uh, I have to show I have to give you some little idea about what is the next hop and what do we have to do in this part. So uh, in this uh, we have to configure it from the global exec execution mode. So I'm going to type IP route now for this router to send packets to send packets to this PC it has to uh, overcome two paths two routes how is it two routes from this uh, using that uh, default gateway it can go here and from here how can it uh, where can where it has to go it has to grow there and from there it has to go this network so there are two different network ID two different network this is a class a IP address that means this network is 10 dot C uh, in 10 dot 65 and 10 dot 236 so this is a 10 dot network ID and this is a 192.168.10 dot network ID that means there are two networks so for this router for the static routing we have to assign two individual static 
uh, to individual routing now uh, let's and what is the hopping oh, and the hop address okay uh, for that uh, let's just add first let's uh, write the network ID and remember that when you are uh, writing when you are mm, assigning the uh, static routing the yes, static writing you have to assign the initial part the initial network of that network okay the initial network ID the initial IP address of that network I have told you earlier what will be the initial uh, IP address of network. you remember that I hope so for this network the initial IP what will be the initial IP 10.0.0.0 and what will be the subnet mask 255.0.0.0 and now there is one more thing we have to add the hopping address then hopping uh, I hope you know hopping is the jumping address so and in this case the hopping means that in that particular network from where the packet will enter in this thing in this network the packet will enter from this path from 172.16.705 and in this particular uh, path it will enter from this but uh, we can just uh, write this hopping uh, for this because uh, it will uh, work the same so to go to this network the hopping address will be this so we have to assign 172.16.5 7.5 okay now it is assigned the routing is assigned if you go to the config and it will be the static routing you can see that this part this network in this network the hopping via through this this port okay now we have to assign one more routes because I have said there are two more networks two more network ID so let's go it uh, route so what will be the initial IP of this network it will be 192.168.10.0 and the subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 what will be hopping address we can use this or we can use this I'm going to use this address 172.16.7.5 okay now if you go to configuration the static routing you can see the two paths are set now for this uh, this router okay I have told you earlier I'm going to use uh, going to use configuration mode from now on so uh, you just have to try it with in the CLI mode just practice 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 guys just practice more and more so for this this is the uh, you can say the main uh, part of the network uh, these two lines are connected via this network so this routers work will be two way that means it will send raw uh, packets from this to this and it will also send packets from this to this so if uh, let's say it's going to send packets from this so yes we have to uh, in for this order we have to use four we have to route four we have to assign four routes can you can see it? there are okay no sorry so we have to use uh, we can we can only assign two routes so when the packet is coming from this so this router will send packets to this so in this network the uh, network ID will be the f uh, 192 dot one the initial network 168.0.0 the subnet max is 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 0 because uh, IPv4 add uh, IP for 24 bits address and next stop will be this IP this port then that means 172.16.6.3 let's add it okay now we have to add one more for this cause um, okay static routing because if the packet is coming from this then we have to assign it for this network so what will be this 192.168.10.0 and then mask will be submit mask 255.255.255.0 and the next stop will be this what is uh, 10 
dot six dot five dot four and just adding okay now it's added now for the last router let's go there and configure the static routing so as like this router the it this router has also pa has to have to pass a uh, two network two network id that means the first one is this which is 172.16.6.0 and the mask will be <coughs> sorry uh, 255.255. Mm, okay, this is the class B, so it's be 0, 0.0, and the next stop will be. Mm, okay, this is the coming. Okay, this that means 10.2.3.6. This is okay, okay, okay. Let me see what is the problem it's going from there okay this is 16 is it counting as a b4 okay why isn't it working okay, let me uh, do it one more time mm, okay static routing the network is 172.16.6.0 Oh, sorry, 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 I made a mistake. That's why zero dot zero. So the mask will be two fifty five dot two fifty five dot zero dot zero, because the first two parts are the same. That means the class B I P address. So the next stop will be ten dot two dot three dot six. So that okay. Now it's added. So now we'll have to uh, use uh, add the next one last network ID which is 192.168 they are this network dot zero dot zero and the subnet mask will be as you all know 255.255.255.0 and the next stop I will use this 10.2.3.6 let's add it okay now we have finished our all the configuration we have finished the, all the routing system and everything and so on so let's try to ping it uh, from this pc to this pc okay um why the functional port why isn't have didn't i assign the ip address let me check it guys Oh yes, I didn't assign the IP address. Sorry, my mistake. One ninety two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot three. Subnet mask is assigned, and the default gateway will be, as I have told earlier, this. This uh, interfaces IP. That means one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot one. Okay, I think it's assigned. Uh, let me just check one more time if its IP address is assigned or not. Uh oh yes it wasn't a sign yes one and two dot one sixty eight dot ten dot zero dot one dot so okay now let me okay one and two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot one okay it's ready I think yep uh finger cross guys let's see okay it showed failed okay let me go to the command prompt and ping it why is it showing failed mm, ping 192.168.10.3 uh, let's just give it a more time mm, time out okay it's trying to ping timed out okay finally it's starting to communicate okay yes yes yay yes guys we have done it the network is finally done you can see the first ping it was 50 percent loss because uh, switch is a mm, we have uh, read that that switch is a what can i say uh, intelligent device and it doesn't work with ipad it works with the mac address so in the 
in communication part and this is not the part of this lesson the communication part there is a request ARP request for from the uh, PC the PC that is sending message in the ARP request the uh, switch will gather the MAC address of the uh, host the destination part and best cons and on the MAC address uh, working and it will work on that MAC address it will uh, Indiv it will and ma what is MAC address? A MAC address is a physical address. IP address is the logical address. The is the address in the internet, but a MAC address is the physical address of the uh, computer, and that address is uh, in uh, that address is in the NIC uh, network interface card. Okay, if you have read my blog, uh, the OSI model, uh, you can understand it much better. So and. Uh, so that's why the first time uh, I think that that's why the it was 50% packet loss and yes the f uh, from the second time we can see that there is 0% loss and it's, it is communicating 100% and if we try it one more time uh, from this to this you can say yes successful the ICMP protocol the messaging protocol is successful and let's see from this piece to this okay from this to this yes this was successful so yeah guys that's how you can create a simple network in cisco packet tracer and configure the basic switch commands and uh, static routing and yes thank you guys you have to practice more and more you can download the packet tracer and try for yourself i hope you have liked this lesson so in future inshallah if i have the time i will come up with more lessons until then take care allah